Hi guys, Lily here. Today I want to show you how to crochet my spiral beanie. It has stripes but no seam running down the back. It's crocheted from the top down and finished with a lovely warm ribbed band. I like to make beanies with a little bit of slouch but if you prefer a more fitted beanie you can easily do that. It's just a matter of how many rounds you work before you create the band. At the top here you can see the cute spiral that I named the beanie after. We're going to start with a magic circle and work in a continuous round, switching between two colours. If your balls of yarn have no breaks, when you finish the beanie you'll only have four tails to sew in. One tail from each colour at the beginning and one tail from each colour at the end. Let me give you a look at the band. It's an easy back loop single crochet ribbing band. The folded over band gives a little extra warmth about the ears and it's really comfortable. Like I said, there's no seam running down the back of the beanie, but if you look, you'll see there is a seam to join the band. It's not particularly noticeable. And if it worries you, you can sew rather than slip stitch to try to make it a little less obvious. When I fold it down, you'll be able to see my slip stitches, but when the beanie is on someone's head, the band will be folded up and the seam is well hidden. This is actually my my current favorite beanie pattern. I make a lot of these. If you're thinking of giving it a go, I'd appreciate it if you could click the like button. It makes a big difference. Thank you for that. This pattern uses DK yarn and you'll need two colors. I'm working with Four Seasons Marvel Acrylic and I've got this lovely sea green for color one and a nice neutral called Fawn for color two. You'll need a four millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, a big eyed needle and two stitch markers. Start by making a magic circle with color one. There are lots of ways to do this. I put a link on the screen if you're interested in learning my preferred method. Otherwise, just make your circle however you like to do it. And just to be clear, color one is the color that you'd like the band of your beanie to be made from. When you've got your circle, I like to tighten mine up a little before I start crocheting. Just don't tighten it up too much. We're going to be attaching a second color into this circle, so leave a little room. Round one, start by putting five half double crochets into this circle. Don't chain one before working your first stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook into the circle. There are two loops of yarn on my hook back here, plus two lines of yarn from the circle and its tail. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops and that's the first half double crochet. Grab one of your stitch markers and mark this first stitch. I'm using a white stitch marker. The white stitch marker will mark the first stitch of the round. Now that's done, I need another four half double crochets in color one into the circle. Make sure that for all of your round one stitches, you're always working over both the circle and its tail, otherwise your circle will not be magical at all. I have five half double crochets in total in color one and I'm going to change colors. Take your hook out of the working loop, grab your second stitch marker, my pink stitch marker will mark the color change, slip the stitch marker into the working loop. I like to tighten up the yarn a little. That helps to keep the stitch marker in place and means there's less yarn flapping about. It's time to bring in color two. Usually I say attach your yarn however you like, but in this case, I strongly recommend you don't use a standing stitch. With this pattern, I found the best method is to put a slip knot on your hook and slip stitch into the magic circle. The working yarn from color one is just hanging there. So make sure you move it out of the way. Insert the hook into the magic circle. There'll be two strands of color one yarn on your hook, the circle and its tail. Yarn over and pull up a loop of color two and pull it through the working loop. And the yarn is attached. Chain one to get up to the right height. This chain one doesn't count as a stitch. Half double crochet into the circle, working over two strands of color one, which is the circle and its tail. Shift this first half double crochet along so it sits right up against the color one stitches. Now put another four half double crochets into the circle. That's five half double crochets in color two and that finishes round one. Find the color one tail and pull on it to close the magic circle. 
This is how your project should look at the end of round one. I've got five half double crochets in each color and I've got two stitch markers in my work. The white one marks the start of the round, the pink one marks the halfway point color change. Round two, we're still using color two and we're still half double crocheting. Take the stitch marker out and put the first half double crochet exactly where the stitch marker was. Put the marker into the half double crochet you just did. That's the first stitch of round two. Put a second half double crochet into that same spot. Squish it in next to the first stitch. Now put two half double crochets into each of the next four stitches. I find I need to hold on to the stitch marker as I'm getting close to it just to keep it out of my way. And two stitches in here. This is the last stitch in colour one from round one, if I can stop splitting my yarn. I now have 10 half double crochets in colour two from the first stitch I marked with the stitch marker to the one that I just made. When you're sure you have 10 stitches, it's time to swap colours. Carefully take your hook out of the colour two working loop. Pull on the stitch marker a little to make the colour one loop a little larger. Take the stitch marker out of the colour one loop and slip it into the colour two loop. Slip your hook into the colour one loop, drop the colour two yarn, pick up the colour one yarn and continue round two using colour one. We're going to keep putting two half double crochets into each stitch. This is the chain one, this is the top of the stitch. If you need help finding the right spot, count back five V's from the stitch marker and that's where you work. That's one half double crochet. I need a second in the same spot and two half double crochets in each of the next four stitches as well. I'm going to skip ahead now. If you're working along with me, pause the video and switch it back on when you've reached the end of the round. At the end of round two, your project should look like this. The round started with color two. There are 10 half double crochets. A stitch marker at the halfway point is holding color two. Then there are 10 half double crochets in color one, which is still on the hook. Round three, take the stitch marker marking the start of the round out and work a half double crochet where the stitch marker was. Put the stitch marker into the stitch you just made. Work a second half double crochet into the same stitch right in next to your first stitch of the round. Then half double crochet on its own in the next stitch, two half double crochets together in the stitch after. Continue like that. One half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the one after until you reach the stitch marker holding color two. I'm going to place a half double crochet on its own in this last stitch before the marker. It's my 15th half double crochet of the round. When you have 15 half double crochets in color one, it's time to change to color two. Carefully take your hook out of the color one loop, take the stitch marker out of the color two loop and slip the stitch marker into the color one loop. Slip your hook into the color two loop, drop the color one yarn at the back of your work Pick up the colour 2 yarn, continue with the same pattern we used for the first half of the round. Two half double crochets in the first stitch, one half double crochet in the next. Repeat that until you place your 15th half double crochet in colour 2 in the stitch right before the next stitch marker. I'm going to skip ahead now. If you're crocheting along with me, pause the video and switch it back on when you have 15 half double crochets in colour 2. This is how it should look at the end of round 3. 
The round started in colour one and there are 15 half double crochets before the colour one loop is held in place with the pink halfway point stitch marker. Then I picked up colour two and worked the same pattern of two half double crochets, then one, then two half double crochets, then one in colour two. So there are 15 colour two stitches and the colour two loop is still on my hook to start round four. Take the stitch marker out and place a half double crochet where the stitch marker was. Mark that first stitch. Then place the second half double crochet in the same stitch. Squish it in next to the first stitch. Then one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Repeat the pattern. So it's two half double crochets in this stitch and then one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. I'll leave you to keep repeating that. Pause now and switch it back on when you have 20 stitches and you've reached the colour change stitch marker. If you're following the pattern correctly, you'll place one half double crochet in the last stitch before the marker. Change to colour one by taking the hook out of the working loop, taking the stitch marker that's holding the colour one loop and putting it into the colour two loop, Slip the hook into the colour 1 loop, drop the colour 2 yarn at the back and pick up the colour 1 yarn and continue on with round 4. We're going to keep following the same pattern, so 2 half double crochets in the first stitch and then 1 half double crochet into each of the next 2 stitches. Keep repeating that and I'll meet you at the end of the round. Round 4 has 40 stitches in total. 20 in each colour. We started the round in colour 2. The second half of round 4 uses colour 1 and colour 1 is still on the hook, ready to start round 5. Take the stitch marker out and work a half double crochet. Put the stitch marker into that first stitch and then half double crochet again into the first spot. For this round the pattern is two half double crochets in one stitch and then one half double crochet in each of the next three. Keep repeating that until you have 25 stitches in colour one and you've reached the colour change stitch marker. I'll meet you there. Change to colour two. Take the stitch marker out of the colour two loop. Put the stitch marker into the colour one loop. Pop your hook into the colour two loop and start crocheting with colour two. Follow the same pattern two half double crochets in the next stitch and then one half double crochet in each stitch for three stitches. Keep repeating that pattern and I'll meet you at the end of the round when you should have 25 stitches in colour two. At the end of round five you'll have 50 stitches in total. We started with 25 colour one half double crochets. The colour one loop is held at the halfway point stitch marker. Then the round finishes with 25 colour two half double crochets and colour two is on the hook, ready to start round six. Take the stitch marker out and work the first half double crochet in its place. Put the stitch marker into this first stitch. The pattern for this round is two half double crochets together, then one in each for four stitches. So put a second half double crochet in with your first stitch, and then one half double crochet in each stitch for the next four stitches. Then repeat. If you're working along with me, pause the video now and turn it back on when you have 30 stitches and you're ready to change colors. Change to color one, take the hook out, shift the stitch marker from the color one loop to the colour 2 loop, slip the hook into the colour 1 loop and pick up the colour 1 yarn. The pattern for the second half of round 6 is exactly the same. Two half double crochets in the next stitch and then one half double crochet in each of the next four. repeat. Pause here and I'll meet you when you have 30 stitches and you're ready to start round 7. 
Round six has 60 stitches. We started with 30 half double crochets in color two, then changed to color one and finished with another 30 stitches. This is a good point to check that your beanie is going to be the right size. So grab your tape measure and measure from the top of your last stitch in color two to the top of the stitch you just finished in color one. If you're on track, your project should measure close to five inches or 12 and a half centimeters. Make sure the magic circle is closed and lay your tape right across the center of your project when you're measuring. Round seven, take out the stitch marker and half double crochet in the first stitch. Put the stitch marker back into that stitch. You're going to love this round, it is really easy. We're going to put one half double crochet into each stitch, no increases. Pause the video here and turn it back on when you've done 30 half double crochets and you're at the halfway point, ready to change to color two with me. Change to color two by taking the hook out of the working loop, shifting the stitch marker from the color two loop to the color one loop, slipping the hook into the color two loop, pick up color two and continue putting one half double crochet into each stitch. Pause now and when you have 30 stitches, switch it back on so we can start round eight together. Round seven was really simple. We started with color one and put one half double crochet into each stitch, then switched to color two and did the same. There are 60 stitches in total. And because we didn't work any increases, the shape has started to change. We're starting to get a little three dimensional. The sides are curling up a bit. Round eight, take out the stitch marker and half double crochet in the first stitch. Put the stitch marker into the stitch you just made. This round the pattern is two half double crochets and then one half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So I'll squeeze another half double crochet in with this one. And then put one half double crochet in each of the next five stitches and then repeat that. Pause the video here and meet me when you're ready to change colors at the halfway point when you'll have 35 stitches. Change to color one. Take your hook out of the working loop, take the stitch marker out of the color one loop and put it into the color two loop. Slip your hook into the color one loop and continue following the same pattern to finish round eight with color one. That's two half double crochets in the next stitch and then one half double crochet into each of the next five and repeat that pattern. Pause the video now and turn it back on when you have 35 stitches in color one. At the end of round eight, you'll have 70 stitches. We started with color two and stopped halfway after 35 stitches, then picked up color one and continued the pattern with another 35 stitches. Round nine, take out the stitch marker and start with a half double crochet. Mark that stitch and then put one half double crochet in each stitch for 35 stitches. Then it'll be time for a color change. So this is a nice, easy round. Pause the video and I'll meet you in the middle of the round. Change to color two. Take out the hook, take the stitch marker from the color two loop and put it in the color one loop. Put your hook into the color two loop. and continue round nine with color two. We're still putting one half double crochet in each stitch. 35 half double crochets will take you to the end of the round. And if you pause now, I'll meet you there. At the end of round nine, there are 70 stitches in the round. We started with 35 stitches of color one and ended with 35 stitches of color two. The edges of the beanie are really curling up now. It's definitely more a bowl than a plate. Let's start round 10. Take out the stitch marker and place the first half double crochet. Pop the stitch marker into that first stitch. This round, the pattern is two half double crochets in one stitch and one half double crochet in each of the next six. So squeeze a second half double crochet in with the first stitch, then work one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches and repeat that pattern. You'll have 40 stitches in color two when you reach the stitch marker. Pause the video and I'll meet you in the middle of the round for the color change. Change to color one by taking out your hook shifting the stitch marker from the color one loop to the color two loop and then slipping the hook into the color one loop. Continue round 10 following the same pattern. Two half double crochets in the next stitch 
and then one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. Repeat that pattern until you have 40 stitches in colour 1. Pause here and I'll meet you at the end of the round. Round 10 started with colour 2. 40 stitches took us to the colour change, then there are another 40 stitches in colour 1, which is still on the hook. The crown of the beanie is now big enough. From here we're extending the length, which means we'll crochet some rounds where we just put one half double crochet in each stitch. But you'll need to continue using the two stitch markers so you can keep the colour changes going and keep track of your rounds. I like a bit of slouch in my beanie, so I'll stop after round 20 to prepare to add a band. If you want more slouch, add a couple more rounds. If you want a more fitted beanie stop after round 18. You need to finish this section on an even number so your band will be colour 1. If you finish on an odd number you'll have a colour 2 band. The setup for the band and the band itself will add maybe another centimetre of length. Let's get into it. Take the stitch marker out and place your first stitch of round 11. Slip the stitch marker onto that first stitch and put one half double crochet into each stitch. I'll leave you to continue crocheting. Pause the video and come back for the final rounds and the band. I finished round 20. If you're making this for yourself, you could try it on at this point and check you're happy with the length. If I measure mine from crown to the top of the last stitch, mine is about 7.5 inches or roughly 19 centimeters. Round 21 is just a little different. We're starting with color one. Take the stitch marker out and place your first half double crochet as usual. Put the stitch marker back into that first stitch and then I'd like you to work one half double crochet in each stitch for the next 37 stitches. Pause while you do that and when you have 38 half double crochets in colour 1 which includes the first stitch with a marker in it, switch the video back on and I'll show you the next step. I finished my 38 half double crochets and there are two empty stitches before the stitch marker which holds the colour 2 yarn in place. We're going to put a single crochet in each of them. If you're not familiar with single crochets, you will be by the end of the beanie, as we'll be doing quite a lot, particularly for the ribbing. Insert the hook. I've got one loop on my hook, plus the top of the stitch I'm working into. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. So that's one single crochet. In the last stitch, I'll single crochet again. And that's the first half of round 21 finished. Change to colour 2 now by taking out the hook, switching the stitch marker from the colour 2 loop to the colour 1 loop, and putting the hook into the colour 2 loop. The second half of round 21 is very simple. Put one half double crochet in each stitch for 40 stitches, which takes us to the end of the round. Round 21 started in colour 1 with 38 half double crochets and 2 single crochets, and it finished in colour 2 with 40 half double crochets. Round 22 continues with colour 2, and we're going to shift to single crochets. Take out the stitch marker and place the first single crochet. Pop the stitch marker into that stitch and then put one single crochet into each stitch for another 37 stitches until you have 38 single crochets in colour 2. Pause the video and switch it back on when you're ready for the next step. I have 38 single crochets and there are two empty stitches before the stitch marker. We're going to finish off with colour 2 now. If you'd like to, you could simply slip stitch into the next stitch like this, insert your hook, Pull up a loop and pull it through the working loop and then cut your yarn and fasten off in your preferred way. I prefer not to slip stitch so I'll pull that out and I'll grab my scissors and my needle so I can work an invisible join. If you'd like to use an invisible join too, cut your yarn leaving a good 10 or 15 centimeters of tail. Slide the hook up pulling the tail through the stitch like this. Thread the tail onto a needle. Invisible joins are worked one stitch to the left of where you'd usually slip stitch. I would usually slip stitch just here, so I'm going to invisible join one stitch to the left. Insert the needle under both loops of the stitch, from the back of your work to the front, trying not to split the yarn. Pull the needle through, 
locate the last stitch you made and insert your needle down into the middle of the V and out into the inside of your beanie, catching the back loop of that single crochet and another loop of yarn on your needle like this. Pull the needle through and that is the invisible join. It's created what looks like the V shape at the top of a crochet stitch. Now you need to weave in the tail nice and securely by sewing back and forth at least three times. Try to keep your stitches hidden on the inside of the beanie. You don't want any colour two peeking out through the colour one. Once you're happy that that tail is secured, meet me and we'll pick up colour one and continue round 22. Take out the stitch marker that's holding the colour one loop and insert your hook. We're going to continue single crocheting, putting one single crochet in each stitch for the next 40 stitches, which will take us to the end of the round. I'm going to stop using the pink halfway point stitch marker now because we're done with the colour changes. Hurrah! <laughs> it's all colour one from here on out. I'll meet you at the end of the round. Round 22 started with colour 2 and after 38 single crochets we finished with colour 2. Either you slip stitched or used an invisible join. Then we picked up colour 1 and 40 single crochets took us to the end of the round. So this round has 78 single crochets and either an invisible join or a slip stitch. Round 23 is the last round of the body of the beanie. Take out the stitch marker and work the first stitch of the round which is a single crochet. I'm going to mark that stitch just on the off chance that I lose count. Round 23 is not a complete round. I want you to single crochet in each stitch for 40 stitches, including the stitch I just marked, and that will take you to the halfway point. I'll meet you there. 40 single crochets has taken me just past the point where colour 2 ended. So it's colour 1 all the way around the circle at this point, and that's the body of the beanie done. The next step is to add the band. Make sure you're happy with the length of your beanie now before you start because while the band itself is quite long it will fold over and up so it isn't really going to add much length to your beanie but it is going to give you a nice extra layer of warmth around your ears. Start by slip stitching into the next stitch. Next, chain 13. You could adjust the length of this chain if you want to. It doesn't need to be a specific multiple. If you want more or less of a fold over, just make the chain longer or shorter. Let me know in the comments if you make any adjustments. I'm always really interested to hear what you've decided you prefer. I definitely change this pattern up when I make it, depending who it's for, what the yarn looks like. I don't know, when you make something on repeat, it's nice to have a little variety. I've got my chain of 13, which will eventually fold down like this. I'm happy with this length. If you do adjust it, make sure you remember what your starting chain length is. It might sound obvious, but it's easy to forget if you put it down and come back to it later. We're going to work into the back bumps of this chain, which means that rather than inserting the hook down into the chain and catching a side loop like this, turn the chain over locate the central bump of yarn running down the back of the chain and when you insert your hook you'll just catch one loop, the back bump. We're going to start by single crocheting into the second chain from the hook. Don't count the yarn on the hook, count back one, two chains, but we're working into the back so turn it over, that's one bump, second bump. Insert the hook into the second bump and single crochet. Grab one of your stitch markers. Don't mark the V at the top of the stitch. This time we're going to mark the bottom of the stitch. We're actually marking the chain that the stitch is worked into. So there's two lines of yarn, which are the vertical bits of the single crochet. There's the V at the top of the stitch, and we're putting the stitch marker in right under the two lines of yarn where the single crochet attaches to the chain. I hope that makes sense. It will help when it's time to seam the ribbing together to mark this spot. Now we're back to single crocheting. One single crochet in the back bump of each chain until you're back down to the beanie. I started with a chain of 13, so I'll have 12 single crochets. You'll have one less single crochet than whatever your starting chain is. I have 12 single crochets. From here we're starting the pattern repeat for the ribbing. We're going to join the ribbing to the beanie by slip stitching to the next empty stitch. If you look at your work, this stitch here is the stitch I slip stitched to before I made my chain. 
So the chain of 13 is coming out of this stitch. The next stitch to the left is the next empty stitch and that's where I'm slip stitching. Slip stitch for a second time into the next empty stitch along. And that has joined the first part of the ribbing back to the beanie. So that's joining to the beanie. The next step in the repeating pattern is working up the ribbing. Chain one, turn your beanie so you can begin working up this strip of ribbing. Look at your work from the top so you can see the V shape of the stitches. We're going to start crocheting in the fourth V from the hook. Don't count the loop of yarn on your hook. The first V is the chain one, the second V is a slip stitch. The third V is a slip stitch. The fourth V is the top of a single crochet and that's where we're starting. We're going to back loop single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. If you're not familiar with back loop single crochets, insert your hook down into the middle of the V of that stitch, catching just the back loop of it. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. I'll show you that again. This is the V of the next stitch along. Insert the hook down into the middle of the V and out into the back of your work, catching one loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Hopefully you're comfortable with that. It is the same as a single crochet, except that you're only catching that back loop of the stitch you're working into. You'll need 11 back loop single crochets in total, which will leave you with one empty stitch at the end of the ribbing. I'm going to skip ahead now and leave you to complete your back loop single crochets. In this final stitch, single crochet, a normal single crochet under both loops of the stitch. However, I have a little optional tip for you. To make your ribbing look a bit neater, each time you crochet up the ribbing, make this last single crochet a little tighter than usual. Put a little more tension on your yarn and deliberately tighten it up a bit. This helps avoid the little gaps you can get at the edge of ribbing. It's a stylistic choice, not essential, but it's something I like to do with this particular pattern and you might like to try it out too. I have 11 back loop single crochets and one normal single crochet and that has finished the working up the ribbing step. Next step in the repeating pattern is working down the ribbing. Start by chaining one. I like to tighten up this chain one, make it a little tighter than usual, that also helps reduce any gaps, and turn. We're going to start in the second V from the hook, which is the top of the last single crochet. And the first stitch is a normal single crochet, worked under both loops. Again, I like to make this stitch a bit tighter than usual. I'm increasing my tension to tighten it up. Then I go back to my normal tension again, and in the next 11 stitches, I'm going to work one back loop single crochet in each. If you're crocheting along with me, pause the video here and turn it back on when you've done 11 back loop single crochets. I've finished working down the ribbing. I have 12 stitches in total one single crochet at the beginning, followed by 11 back loop single crochets. That's taken me back to where the ribbing meets the beanie. If you haven't crocheted a lot of single crochet ribbing, I strongly recommend you count your stitches. It is super easy to lose a stitch when you're getting the hang of ribbing. If you think it'll help, you can always use stitch markers. Mark your first stitch when you begin working up the ribbing and your first stitch when you begin working down the ribbing. I've reached the end of the last step of the pattern repeat now. The next thing you need to do is start those three steps over. One, joining to the beanie. Two, working up the ribbing. And three, working down the ribbing. To join to the beanie, find the first empty stitch on the beanie. This is where we slip stitched last time. This is the first empty stitch. Slip stitch into the first empty stitch, then slip stitch again into the next empty stitch along. That's step one of the pattern repeat done. Start the next step of the pattern repeat, working up the ribbing by chaining one and turning. Find the fourth V from your hook. Don't count the loop on your hook. Count back one V, two, three, and four. Into the fourth V, place a back loop single crochet. 
and back loop single crochet into the next 10 stitches as well until you have 11 back loop single crochets. Into the 12th stitch, place a normal single crochet. You might like to make that normal single crochet a little bit tighter than your usual stitches. That's working up the ribbing. The final step in the pattern repeat is working down the ribbing. Chain one, tighten up the chain one, turn your work. Start with a normal but a little tighter than usual single crochet. The first stitch goes into the second V from the hook. Don't count the loop of yarn on your hook, just count the Vs. One, two. After that first normal single crochet, work 11 back loop single crochets, one in each of the next 11 stitches. That will take you back down to where the ribbing joins the beanie and you'll start again at step one, joining to the beanie. You can use the chapter markers I've created, they're in the description box, to go back and rewatch this bit as often as you need to. You'll know that you're ready to move on to the final step in crocheting your beanie, which is joining up the ribbing, when you finish working down the ribbing for a final time to find that there is only one empty stitch available. Where you would be placing your second slip stitch, you've reached the chain of 13 that we started the band with. So here I am, I've worked down the ribbing for the last time. I'm going to join up by slip stitching to the next empty stitch, just as usual. Then for the second slip stitch, insert the hook here, under the V just to the right of the chain of 13. We're actually going to slip stitch to a slip stitch. And now follow the working up the ribbing pattern one final time. Chain one, turn, starting in the fourth V from the hook, place one back loop single crochet in each stitch for 11 stitches. Then in the final stitch, a normal single crochet. And I'm sticking with making my normal single crochet a little tighter than usual, just as I have with the rest of my ribbing. Now it's time to join the two edges of ribbing together. I am gonna continue crocheting using slip stitches to seam the two sides closed. If you prefer, you could use a whip stitch to sew the sides together. Neither joining method is right or wrong. I much prefer crocheting because I enjoy it more than sewing, but I think perhaps sewing creates a marginally less noticeable seam. Whichever method you use, this side of the join, which you can see facing the outside of your beanie, is actually the side that will be covered when the band folds up. So work your stitches, whether sewn or crocheted, on the outside of your beanie because it will end up being hidden. I want to get this working loop over to this side of the join. To do this, take the hook carefully out of the working loop. Insert the hook into the chain that we marked with a stitch marker under both loops of the V. This is the 12th chain of the starting chain from the ribbing. Slip the working loop back onto the hook and pull it through the chain. And turn the beanie so that you'll be able to slip stitch along that seam. Take out the stitch marker now. We're done with stitch markers completely, finally. chain one just to get a bit of wiggle room. The first slip stitch will go through both loops of the top of the last single crochet just here and both loops of the starting chain which I just took the marker out of. Slip your hook under those two V's. It can be a little bit fiddly getting your hook under the single crochet. Remember I have been making the single crochet is deliberately a little bit tighter so that's why it's looking a bit tricky and then also under the V of the 12th chain of the starting chain. Now yarn over and pull through both of those. Then pull that loop through the working loop to slip stitch. From here, I'm going to do another 11 slip stitches, but I won't be working them under the full V of the single crochets. The single crochets are the stitches on the side of the join closer to me. 
I'm going to be inserting the hook under the back loop only of the single crochet, then both loops of the chain and slip stitch. Keep doing that. Insert the hook through just the back loop of the single crochet under both loops of the chain and slip stitch. Insert the hook under the back loop of the single crochet, both loops of the chain and slip stitch. Keep repeating that until you have 12 slip stitches in total and you've closed the seam. It can be a little bit fiddly getting your hook into the final single crochet. And that is my last slip stitch. As you can see, the seam is joined up quite nicely from the outside of the beanie. That's not really noticeable at all. The last thing I need to do is fasten off and weave in my tails. You might like to chain one before you cut your yarn. I prefer just to cut my yarn and pull the tail through. Then whether you've chained one or not, you'll need to weave in this tail. Thread it on your big eyed needle and sew back and forth at least three times, then cut it off nice and close. I'm not gonna walk you through weaving in all the tails, but please don't forget the two tails from the beginning of the beanie. Take particular care with the color one tail that secures the magic circle. Once you've done the tails, there's only one step left. Wear your beanie. That's the last step. Put it on your head or on someone else's head. Mm -hmm.